Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz, the boss man at Zelda Informer, and we're back! It's been about a month since we've done a regular episode. I did do a little tribute to Satoru Iwata you can watch over here. That's all great and dandy, but today we're kind of coming back with something fresh, something hot, uh, something I've been near and dear to me for quite a while and I just haven't talked to it, talked to it, to it, boss man, to it, it's not an it, it's a, uh, anyways, um, we're going to be talking about the Song of Storms paradox and what I think really happened, what the origin is, all that great stuff. Uh, also stay tuned for the end, we're going to do a little bonus, I'm going to show you my new crib, uh, yeah. That's basically what I'm going to do, show you my crib that I've been working on the last month and why I haven't been doing Boss Man episodes. So yeah, uh, cool, stay tuned. We also have a special bonus at the end, an announcement, but you have to stay to the end to see it. So let's get right into it. The Song of Storms Paradox, here we go. So for those who aren't aware, the Song of Storms Paradox is that in Ocarina of Time, when you are an adult, you visit the Windmill Man and he basically tells you that the Song of Storms was taught to him by an ocarina kid uh, seven years prior. So let me read you the exact quotes. I got them right here. So it says, what? You've got an ocarina? What the heck? That reminds me of that time seven years ago. Back then, a mean kid came here and played, on a, played a strange song. It messed up this windmill, and I'll never forget this song. He goes on to say, grr, I'll never forget what happened on that day seven years ago. It's all the Ocarina Kid's fault. So what he's suggesting is that you, when you were a child in the game, taught him that song. Except you didn't know that song when you were a child. So there's the paradox. There, there's no origin for this. And there's actually a name for this paradox called the Bootstrap Paradox. And I, it confuses me to this day. So I've always wondered, where did this song come from? So, it, I really didn't figure this out until Majora's Mask 3D came out, and this is my bad because it's been in, it was in the original game back in 2000. Um, it turns out that according to Majora's Mask, which is a canon Zelda game, uh, that Flat, one of the composer brothers, uh, one of, Flat, one of the composer brothers, the other one's name is Sharp, uh, actually created this song. Um, so here, here's what Flats had to say on his plaque, um, his little gravestone. It said, Sharp sold his soul to the devil and was the one who locked me in here. You who do not fear the dead, learn well the song that is inscribed behind me. And if you ever meet my brother, I'd like you to inform him the 1,000 years, uh, you, I'd like you to inform him, form him the 1,000 years of raindrops summoned by my song are my tears. The thunder that strikes are my anger. So <laughs> I might have fumbled up the quote a little bit there. Uh, if you see on here, towards the bottom, it was getting really hard to read. Um, but reality is, is that Flat composed this song um, in Termina to kind of go against his brother and always remind his brother Sharp of what he did to him. Uh, so with the tears and the thunder and all that stuff. So it would seem that Flat composed it. So there you go, Flat created it. That's the origin of the Song of Storms, end of the story. Except it doesn't really explain the paradox. Because Link, when Link is in Termina and he relearns the Song of Storms, it is presented to him as he is remembering the Song of Storms. Because almost all of the music in Majora's Mask is from Ocarina of Time. So this Link, who is young Link, who was sent back by Zelda and traveled into Termina, already knows these songs. He just doesn't remember them. So even though he found out the origin of the Song of Storms, he himself already knew that song. And that that's still very interesting. And it makes sense that this Link knows that song because he was adult Link that got sent back to being a child um, after completing the adult timeline by Zelda, by Princess Zelda at the end of Ocarina of Time. That was the big thing. This is where we always knew there was a timeline split because of that action by Princess Zelda. It still doesn't explain how the song made its way into Ocarina of Time from Link at all. Now, there are some theories out there about how um, you know, the goddesses must have sent Link back after Majora's Bath. 
back to just before the uh, Master Sword was pulled and had him teach the song to the uh, <laughs> to the Windmill Man. Uh, I was about to say Guru Guru, but that's his name in Majora's Mask. Uh, he has no name in Ocarina of Time. So he taught him that song and then some events happened and that Majora's Mask was ripped out of that timeline and blah blah blah. It's just a bunch of theories. None of it really makes a whole lot of sense because it involves all this extra time travel mumbo jumbo and I don't buy it at all. Um, I do believe that Majora's Mask explains the origins of the Song of Storms but it doesn't explain how the Song of Storms made its way into Hyrule from Link himself and I don't know that it can be explained. Uh, I mean how, how can young Link who doesn't know the song teach it to the Windmill Man and then the Windmill Man teaches it to adult Link. It just it doesn't make sense. There's no way that I can make sense of this. And it's really bugged me for years. And I don't know. I just felt like talking about it again uh, because Majora's Mask 3D came out. And um, it really made me rethink uh, the whole Song of Storms paradox. So what do you think? What do you think the origins of the song are? Uh, is it not from Majora's Mask? Uh, how do you think Link got the song from the world of Termina into the world of Hyrule? And uh, kind of fumbled up that whole paradox. Or hey, did the song, is it just the bootstrap paradox? Did it just come from nothing? It never existed and there's no explanation. It's just a video game and we're overthinking things. That's entirely possible. But yeah, that's it. That's the bootstrap paradox. I didn't mean to bootstrap paradox. The song is starting with paradox. Um, yeah, short, sweet, to the point. So uh, next, I'm going to be taking you on a little tour of my home. So that should be fun. Uh, we put in, I put in 16 hour days every single day for like three and a half weeks on this house. I basically woke up, came here, worked, went back to bed. Didn't see my kids much, didn't do a lot of site work. Uh, you guys should know, I haven't been around the site. You haven't seen me posting or commenting or any of that fun stuff uh, until like the last week when I came back. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take you a tour of the home, show you uh, my new setup for doing work at Zelda Informer. And yeah, so I will catch you guys on the other side of the showing. All right, everybody, this is the boss man, Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, showing you my humble abode. What you're looking at now is my big backyard. So when we moved in, the grass, or should I say the weeds here, were about three feet tall in my backyard. This was one massive field. So as you can see, it is no longer one massive field. It could maybe use a lawn mowing today, but. Otherwise, it's in, it's in pretty good condition compared to when we moved in. Uh, it takes about three hours to mow my lawn here, so that's no fun. What you see over here is what is going to eventually be a playground for my kids. Uh, what did this used to be? Well, the former renters, uh, they made this an illegal garbage burning pit. And they were burning any and all garbage they could find. Uh, me and my best buddy pulled out about 30 pounds of metal out of the ground. Uh, yeah, it was not fun. So, uh, yeah, obviously I have it co covered up because we're trying not to let uh, plants and weeds grow back in it. And eventually, when I have enough money, which I'm not even close, I need another, I think I estimated it out at about $2,000 to actually finish the playground. Um, yeah, we're going to put rubber pellets and do a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff and make it nice and fun and safe for my kids. Eventually. Eventually. Um, so yeah, this is the back of the house. Uh, obviously, we still have a bush problem there with the steps. I need to, I haven't taken care of that yet. I haven't done much here. I power washed the back here a little bit. Um, I haven't gotten to the back corner, which you'll see one of the problems when we moved in. Over here, you'll see the mold. And this is a common problem we have with this house. You'll see some mold on the side in here. Now, thankfully, this mold will come off when I finish power washing. I just haven't had the opportunity to get to it yet. Uh, there was also some damage in the siding here. Let's see if you can see some of it. Uh, it's not too bad here, but if we walk around to the front, you can see a bit more of it. Um, you look up there, you see that hole? That's a woodpecker hole. There's another woodpecker hole here. And there was woodpecker holes all over the siding. We patched most of it. Um, I have not power washed this side yet because I wanted to let that patching dry. I can see some of the patches down there. Um, anyways, there was a bunch of plants here and they were all dead, so they all got chopped down. 
Uh, we haven't obviously pulled everything onto the ground yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, if I back out here, you kind of see the front of the house. Um, nothing really too special to look at, just pretty standard looking home. At least standard looking home for northwestern Wisconsin. On my front yard, you know, I got a nice maple tree here, pine tree, a couple birch trees over there. Uh, yep, we live right on the corner, so that's always fun. Um, my car, if you guys ever wondered what I drove, it's my car. Um, so yeah, uh, moving on to the tour. I'm not going to take you into my garage because it's a big garage, but it's pretty messy. Uh, we trimmed down these bushes too. They were tall and all over the place. We made them more manageable, but <sighs> so let's go through the front door. Watch. I'm probably locked out because it's probably locked. Of course, the front door is locked. <laughs> that's okay. We'll finish walking around the house. Uh, see if this door is unlocked. Maybe I'll give you a quick look at the inside. Yep, okay, so this is the inside of the garage. Um, most of the stuff you see in here is actually not ours. A friend Casey's, a friend of my girlfriend named Casey is storing some stuff here. Most of our stuff's in our house. So, yeah, we're just waiting for, we me get some garbage there. We're waiting for our garbage service to deliver our garbage can so we can throw out our garbage. Should be here this week. Walk around. Other side, we got some ladders that we need to take care of and put away. Um, this side was power washed. It didn't really go over as well as I want. Um, I plan to replace all the siding on the house. Uh, you also have a giant power line thing back here. A lot of people don't like living by these because they have fears about you know the extra electricity and what it does to people. I don't care. It doesn't bo bother me much. This door is actually broken. You can see it down on the bottom. You can see it. I zoom in right there. That was broken when we got here. Right now there is a chair preventing people from coming in. But I mean, if you push hard enough, you can get through. This is the deck. I didn't really show you guys a big view of it, but it needs a lot of work. I'm not really proud of it yet. That's probably going to be next summer's project. So now we move on to the inside of the house. This is the living room. Our whole living room. What am I talking about? The dining room. I'm losing my mind. Um, to give you an idea, when we usually come in, we come in from the garage. So this is what it looks like. The dining room. And then the kitchen over here. Uh, we bought a brand new fridge and a brand new stove to go with this place because the fridge it had was broken and the stove it had didn't work. Uh, it still has the old, old, old dishwasher. Um, it does work. The sink still needs to be a little bit cleaned. See some leftovers from us having lunch today. Our microwave no big deal uh, this cabinet was actually further over this way and this over here was up up top up here however the fridge we wanted to get a big fridge so um, you can kind of see the fridge extends past where the cabinet was so we had to move everything over and I just haven't reinstalled everything and um, I'm waiting because our water line for the ice maker hasn't been installed yet so we'll get to that you come this way you see a few things we haven't finished putting away yet uh, this is the living room the upstairs living room not much in it just a couch my 40 inch TV PlayStation 3 which we basically use just to watch movies I don't even own a PlayStation 3 game right now um, so yeah we literally like you see a DVD back there and some movies and books over here we literally just watch TV on it um, there's our coat closet that does not have a door this is a common theme with almost every closet we have in this house because all the doors were broken and you know, with the house without a vacuum cleaner. That's the front door. All right. Uh, one thing I want to note is that when we came into this house, everything was moldy. So when you walked into the living room and you look at the wall, there was mold everywhere. And this entire house got demolded and it took two weeks to demold the whole house. Um, that was one of the biggest delays that's getting in here and we did all the repainting So when you look at the ceiling and if you see any problems with the lines and all that stuff Probably because we got lazy and tired of doing it So we come down here This is the hallway now my kids are sleeping so I'm gonna get a little bit quieter this door right here As you see just opened is my daughter Melody this is her room. Can I show people your room sweetie? Okay so she has a little, her room got painted pink. 
Um, it's got a little canopy, and she's got a little, little similar thing for her doll dresser. And as you can see, again, missing closet doors, but you know, we made the best of it. So that's her room. Bathroom. We installed a new vanity. So that's kind of a big deal for us. Uh, we always wanted to have a really nice vanity in our main bathroom, and now we do. Um, the light fixtures were over here when we moved in. Not a fan of them, but they get the job done for now. Uh, the toilet. This is actually a new toilet seat, but it's one of those cheapies. Um, you know, bathtub with some toys for my kids that haven't been cleaned up. And obviously everything was repainted in here. This excites me. I've never had one uh, on my own. A laundry chute. So that's always cool. Um, as we come down here on the left, despite the piece and stuff, this was all here when we moved in. Um, we just haven't removed them. This is actually my son's room, and he's sleeping right now. Oh, no, he's awake. Here, let's open that up. And so this is my son's room. There he is waking up. It's blue. This is the crib, because we have a new baby coming by the end of August. Yeah. So you see, this is just kind of a basic setup. No, again, no closet doors are broken. Yup, and you have Sully. Yup. This is the master bedroom where me and my girlfriend sleep. Bed's not made, so it's, it's, it's a pretty big mess. So this is a brand new mattress. Uh, we got this for $300. It was $1,000 off on Amazon. It's a really nice mattress. Um, and we have the sweet mirror closet doors the only closet doors that actually work in the whole house um, got a big fan my son is down here holding out for your life this is um this is our little bathroom or you know the master bathroom no big deal just a little half shower and everything so let's take you guys down to the basement here this is where the magic happens hey, this is where i do all of my zelda informer work and I have things set up. I have my man cave, my office, all that great stuff. So, coming through the garage, you got steps that go down. They go around. And then you have, this is a storage area here on the left. Nothing special in here. Nothing the lights on. It's just got our electric panel. Um, <laughs> a fun note, this is actually illegal. I did not wire this. Um, but it is what it is. This is just a storage room. You come out here, kind of our laundry room. It's a little messy down here. Uh, giant storage cabinet. This is here when we moved in. I think we have just kids games in here right now. Yeah, we do. You can't see them. Um, washer and dryer, they both work, kind of. <laughs> we want to replace them eventually, but we're broke. All right, so this, this is, um, hasn't been fully cleaned yet, as you can see on the bar table. But this is the main cave. You got my Brewers, my Milwaukee Bucks over there, Green Bay Packers here. Um, and what you'll see back here is this giant green wall. So that is a green screen. Um, I decided to paint the walls a green screen because I, this room not only doubles as a man cave and where I'm gonna watch all my games, it doubles as where I'm gonna be doing all my live streams for Zelda Informer. And instead of setting up my green screen every single time, it was easier just to make the whole wall green. Um, and to make and it, and conveniently, I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. So green and yellow, green, and then there's yellow over there. So it's actually kind of convenient. Uh, obviously right here, this is my big 60 inch TV uh, where I do all my gaming. If you, fun little fact, I just sold my Xbox One the other day to pay bills. So I literally only have a Wii U under there and then a charging station for Xbox One's controllers. Um, that doesn't do me any good. So I have my Wii U, I have my capture card under there. Right now the capture card is actually plugged into the Wii U so it powers itself so you can display the Wii U on the big screen. Um, hold on, sweetie. Um, over here you just have the game pad and some extra cords. Um, and then this is kind of my, my gaming shelf. Not really much on it because I honestly had to get rid of a lot of my gaming collection during this move. Um, there's a lot of stuff that needed to be bought um, for this house. You see, I still got Splatoon here. Uh, there's some Smash Bros. Brand new copy there. I'm going to be using for the Smash tournament next week. And my, some Zelda stuff up there. And my Majora's Mask 3D box back there. I do not know where my Majora's Mask 3D 3DS uh, is right now. So that doesn't make me happy. 
See, this is the bar. It's got a little brewer's duct tape on it because I just felt like doing that. All right, yeah, so that's that's the one part of the man. And obviously, I got the Green Bay Packers drape. I'm a big Packers fan. This is the playroom. As you can see, it's yellow. We have the same carpeting in the whole house, just this nice brown stuff. And this is a majority of my kids' toys. They have some up in the room and some outside. Got a little Olaf up there. My kids love Frozen. Um, now, I'm warning you before we step in here, it's got a little messy because I've been working and haven't really cleaned it. But this is my office where I do all my work for ZeldaInformer.com, where I'll be editing this video. My to-do whiteboard. It's basically mandatory when you're doing any sort of online work. It's a way to keep things organized. Um, that's a picture of me and my little sister when we were little kids. So yeah, believe it or not, I used to be cute at one point. Um, otherwise, this is my workstation. Got my two 24 inch monitors there. Well, one's actually a 20 inch, not a 24, but I like to dream. And some storage units with some stuff and um, some garbage and water bottles from the day. More storage. And then there's a closet with a broken closet door I have not taken care of. And some extra stuff, like an extra router up here. Uh, Blu-ray player. And uh, I think this is extra modem. No, this is an extra modem. And this was... Oh, this is a, a DirecTV internet box. Because some of the old DirecTV cable boxes did not have wireless internet. So that's like a wireless internet box. And I kept it because you can use it in conjunction with the Blu-ray DVD player and watch Netflix and all that great stuff. So if we want to put Netflix in another room, I have a way to do it. Um, obviously, this is the computer, which doesn't look like I'm taking good care of because there's some garbage here. But this is the computer, the Alienware uh, 15, early 2015 edition. It's got my i7 processor with my 970M and my 16 gigs of RAM, my SSD, all that great stuff. What I do all my work on at Zelda Informer. Um, I see it's got cool lights on it, but that's not why I got it. Uh, it cost me about $1,500. Pretty cool. I still want a full desktop rig. I can't afford it. I might never be able to afford it. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a, a fundraiser or a fundraising live streaming at one point to try to fund my new desktop rig I want to get um, just to prove everything works. This is my mechanical keyboard. Got it, just got it at Walmart. It is a nice one. It's a Razer. But, um, yeah, so as you can see, some fun stuff there. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That is my humble abode. That is how I'll be rocking Zelda Informer from now on. Obviously, I'll be spending a lot of my time in the basement, but it's a pretty nice house, pretty big. Got to look at my wall cling. We'll just end it on the wall cling because that wall cling is awesome, and it has survived two different moves, and I really need to get some more of them. All right, I will catch you guys later. Thank you for checking out this episode of The Boss Man. Welcome back, so that was my home. I hope you enjoyed the view. Uh, it's lots of crazy things gonna happen. So one thing uh, I wanted to mention, and I'm announcing this now, is that we are gonna be starting up a Super Smash Brothers Wii U online tournament. Uh, this tournament's going to feature uh, two different bracket sections. There's gonna be the brackets that deal with items being turned on, which are my personal favorite brackets. And then there are going to be brackets that have items turned off for those that feel that serious smashing can only be done without items on. I'm not here to debate who's right and who's wrong on that, but uh, we're going to cater to both audiences at the same time. So depending on how many people sign up for this tournament, we'll determine how many different brackets we need. We are still sorting out the details because the smash bracket stuff just came out recently. So we need... A little bit more time to organize it and get it all set up. Uh, there is going to be a prize for both bracket sides. I haven't sorted out what that prize is going to be. It could be a Master Sword Shield or a Master Sword Shield. I'm sorry, uh, Hyvian Shield or it could be the Master Sword replica. Uh, it might also be a Zelda bathrobe. Uh, you might see me rocking one in a few weeks. We'll see. Uh, but it could be the Zelda bathrobe. It could be. Uh, wall Klingons. It could be lots of crazy things. So, yeah, we haven't determined what the prize pool is yet. There's not going to be an entry fee. Uh, so the prizes will be coming out of our pocket. Uh, if you guys really want to have bigger prizes in the future, we can obviously discuss entry fees after this first tournament. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And staff are going to be allowed to be in the tournament. So you might be facing off against some of your favorite staff. Maybe you'll get to be the one who eliminates me. Or, let's be honest, I'm winning the whole thing anyways, so... Uh, 
Ah, oh, you also not even show up. Uh, so next week we will have an announcement on that. You look forward to it on ZeldaInformer.com. Uh, I'll also remind people in the boss man uh, to sign up for it. And yeah, otherwise, leave a comment below about this episode. Let me know what you thought, uh, what your thoughts are about the uh, Song of Storms paradox, where you think the origins come from, how you think Link got it from Termina into Hyrule, or if you don't think it came from Termina, what's your explanation for how uh, Link was able to teach a song that he didn't know at the time to someone um, that he learned the song from, if that makes any sense in your brain. Um, also, if you have any ideas for future episodes, let me know below. Maybe there's a theory you want me to cover. Uh, maybe you just have some questions. Uh, maybe you want me to talk more about Triforce Heroes or Zelda U. Or maybe you just want me to shut up. Let me know down below. See you. Peace.